Hello YouTube! My name is Nero, welcome back to some more Game Dev Tycoon, now complete with mods! That hopefully won't make the game crash like it just did. Uh, so there's some new things we've added to the game here. First and foremost, let's add ourselves a large booth for whatever convention's coming up. And, uh, well done! Your game, Nero City, has been your best, uh, game ever published by your company. And it has sold, or it scored 7 point, or 9.75 with a profit of 178.5 million dollars. So, two ads I've got, or one's, like, called Expansion Pack, which... Supposedly adds almost like an expansion pack where there's a bunch of different cool things. There is tons of actual new consoles that are going to be coming out that you guys couldn't see. Because I, I had to test this out, of course, uh, just to make sure everything was working with the mods and whatnot. And they add a whole bunch of new systems like the Atari and Apple's going to be making some stuff. And there's a bunch of new gaming consoles that are going like, to be coming out to the market soon. As well as you go to develop a new game up here. And we go to our topic, there are a ton of new topics. And what do those little dots mean? I do not know. Maybe that means how many games I've made of that topic? That'd be pretty neat if that's the case. I'm looking, but it doesn't seem to be the case, though, because I don't think we've made three zombie games. I know we've made medieval and um, fantasy games, but we don't seem to have done that. I don't know what those mean, but there's tons of stuff to research, first and foremost. So let's get ourselves some new topics. Oh, we also have info and stats, but right now I'm not even sure what they do. Because maybe we'd have to actually make games for these things before that actually can work and happen and such. Oh, wait. No. Yes. Okay. So the, here's some of the new things that are going to be coming. You can see them right here. We got the 3GS. Uh, the Gur Mac. It's gonna basically like the Apple Mac, the grap, the Grappintosh. <laughs> it's like a Macintosh, I guess. Uh, the the Itara. The Itara. The Itara 5200. Uh, the the M Box 360 Slim, hmm. The Holo Box. I don't know what most is, like. There's a bunch of stuff that is gonna be coming, or maybe it's already out, and I have to like license it or something. I don't know. But right now, let's do some researching and get. Our, oh, oh, oh. We also have a bunch of new graphic stuff, like basic holograms and animated textures and animated advanced shaders and realistic particles and copywritten sound and realistic sound and superior AI and AI difficulty and cheat codes and premium content and quick saving and seasons and collectibles. <laughs> we bosses! We finally, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, now have stuff to spend our research points upon. And, uh, yeah, so let's get... I want to look at the new topics, E3. Thank you. And apparently there's more gaming conventions, too. I, that's one of the things I read on it. And apparently you can set your price for every game now, which we can try and just... Oh, five, oh by the way, 5,132,000 people showed up for this E3. What was I looking to do? Oh, yeah, research. There's just, like, so much to do right now. It's like, hi, hey, guys, we got a lot of stuff happening. Bye. All right, so we got Assassin. Archery, mining, puzzle. Oh, we're going to have to slowly go down through all this, aren't we? All right, so let's start off here with mining, you say? Minecraft! Just think of this thing that we can make Minecraft. All right, uh, train. Uh, not train. God, I'm stupid. There's so much stuff going on. My brain's like moving a million miles a minute here. Uh, survival. It's a shame we can't do mining survival, because I guess that'd be... Oh, 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 and I can also buy them energy drinks now, which will make them work faster. How much does energy drink cost? 500 gold, that's it. Oh, dude, look how fast he's going. Oh, man, energy drinks, that's going to be neat. Uh, okay, let's get some new topics. There's so much new things to these add-ons. There's links to both add-ons I'm using in the description. How you basically, uh, if, you, if you guys want to do this for yourself, basically, um, you have to... Download the file and then like just put on your like extract it or whatever to your desktop and then move it into your uh, Game Dev Tycoon mods folder and it was uh, it was a bit confusing especially with the expansion pack one because for whatever reason like the original zip file doesn't work you have to open up a zip file and then use the file from within there it was it was a horror deal surfing where's researching all the things right now uh, horse racing. Okay. Construction. We're just going to research all the things. Hockey. Hey, right, we never had hockey before? Well, I guess that'd be under sports. Maybe they add individual sports. Astronaut. Let's get Assassin. I feel, I feel as though we should be getting Assassin. Uh, I'm just going to grab them all. There's archery. Let's research. Puzzle. Yeah, last time though, I, I was gonna record this episode in like two minutes in, like, uh, the, 
is it gonna happen again? The, the entire R&D lab went black and then like I couldn't click anything and it became a whole ordeal. Kind of scared me. Now I'm afraid to like go over there. But uh, those guys are all done. All right. Let's get to researching more topics, you fools. All right. Board game. Uh-uh. I like board games. Why is there not a good like video game version of Clue? I love Clue. Alternate world. Okay. Uh, keep in mind all the different things we're researching here. Dinosaurs. Keep in mind all the cool things we're researching here. Because when you leave suggestions for different kinds of games. Uh, beat em up. Okay. We got a beat em up genre now. Or, well, topic, I guess. What else we got here? Uh, we got ice hockey. Wait, did we already have hockey? Now there's ice hockey? What? <laughs> I just seen he's kind of redundant. Okay, so we got American football. Now we got Canadian football. All right, Vikings. All right. Uh, let's research something over here with me. Uh, super villain. Let's just gra I'm just going to grab astronaut, though, because I'm going to try and get every single possible topic that we can get. Then we got research all the things. This thing, we can make a whole new engine. We can make a whole new console with all our new things. And maybe that'd be amazingly good. I don't know. There's also a multiplayer mod, apparently. I don't even know how that would work. But I don't have anyone to play with anyway. I don't think... The only person I know that has this game is Wildcat. And I don't think he plays it anymore. Uh, not vacation. Let's continue researching. Let's get our canoeing. Tower defense. That's cool. We got tower defense now. Research. New topic. Goblin, I like goblins. Yo, know, here's the thing. Who can relate with me on this one? So here is my kind of dilemma. I am in a love-hate relationship with World of Warcraft, and I don't even play the game. I want to get into that game. I do. But every time I try getting into it, it's like... <sighs> there's so much reading. I don't like the way you move around. Like, I'm interested in everything uh, about the game besides the game itself. And, like, one another big thing about going at, like, something like World of Warcraft is, like, the game's been out for, like, 10 plus years. Like, 10 plus. Like, they, they misspelled Wizards. Uh, the game's been out for 10 plus years, right? There's 10 plus years of content. I would not get bored. Like, well, I, I guess it's possible to get bored. I would not run out of things to do in that game. And it sounds, like, so cool and, like... But I just can't get into it. I keep, I've been trying, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I like the goblins in that game. I, I think they're interesting. Like I, like, I don't even play World of Warcraft, and while I was, like, sitting there, like, trying to fall asleep last night, I was just kind of looking at my phone, I was reading on the lore of goblins in World of Warcraft, and it's actually pretty interesting. It's like, I'm looking at all this stuff, but I don't even play the game, and I try playing the game. Like, I can't even get out of the starting zone. It's like, ah. Uh, this is boring. I don't, like, I like to know what's happening in the quests that I'm doing. And to do that, I need to sit there and, like, read everything. Because the game doesn't have, like, voice acting and stuff. And it's like, ah, I don't know. I send all these suckers on vacation saying they're all just about falling apart researching topics. But, yeah, that's my dilemma with that game. I wanted to get into it, but I, I, I can't. I don't, I don't know. Elder Scrolls Online, though, is fun. The thing with Elder Scrolls Online, like, Elder Scrolls Online as an MMO versus uh, World of Warcraft is that Elder Scrolls is so new, and it's very limited, I feel, in, like, what you can do as compared to something like World of Warcraft, you know? Um, I'm, if you know anything about Elder Scrolls Online, I am part of the Aldmeri Dominion. I am a Khajiit, and I'm a Dragon Knight, and I'm veteran rank 4. I think I'm, like, 50% of the way to veteran rank 5. And you guys don't know maximum rank is veteran rank 12. And I think if I were to really, and I'm, I'm going slow with it, like, intentionally. Like, I could probably power grind it, and I could probably hit max rank, you know, by Sunday or so, I would imagine. I don't think it'd be really that hard. Uh, the best way to rank up, and I'll probably make a video on it, is to really go, like, just go into new zones, take out all the world bosses, take out all the uh, dolmens, and take out all the caves. And you just get, like, a ridiculous amount of XP. Like, I could power grind through that, but... Like what I do just kind of for fun is like I'll turn on like some music or I'll turn on like uh, like a, like a YouTube video and like so like a YouTube like a playlist of someone's video and or maybe a podcast and then I'll just go and like just farm materials like I'll go you know mine ores and grab like wood and stuff because I have like this guy that like, I don't know how where he gets all this money but he like sends me a ridiculous amount of money for just 
like the most basic materials like uh, refined materials for example in, in elder scrolls online if you guys play the game you'll understand if you don't um warlocks <laughs> refined materials are basically like okay so you have a bunch of iron ore and then you smelt all the iron ore to make iron ingot you know the iron ore is a lot more valuable than the actual ingot because you can get cool things when you smelt like uh, different kind of tempering or tempers and stuff uh, this guy will buy all ingots, like basically any refined material for six, for six gold a piece or six hundred a stack, and he'll give me fifteen gold or fifteen hundred a stack for raw materials, which is a ridiculously good price, almost double what you could usually get. So I just go farm materials for an hour and just make like thousands and thousands of gold off of this guy. I just send it to him in the mail, and he sends gold back, and it's great. So that's kind of fun, but the game itself feels kind of limited. And I don't even know why I'm talking about MMOs right now, mainly because we're not doing anything interesting aside from researching things. But, you know, that, that's kind of my dilemma with, the, like, the World of Warcraft. And the thing about Elder Scrolls, it's like, it feels kind of limited, you know? Like, you can only have five abilities at once, which those abilities are nice, but you can only have five of them on your screen at once. I think it'd be nicer if we could have more. But the one, I think the reason that it's like that and that it's so stripped down until you can have five abilities plus an ultimate ability is because it's supposed to work for the consoles as well. I think, I think that's the issue, is that the game is all supposed to work for consoles as well. God, there's so many things. Okay, I think I want to make a game now. Okay, I'm going to finish it off, and I'm going to make a game. Yeah, there's my... Just talking about MMOs that aren't even the game I'm currently playing for... You know, five minutes or ten minutes, however long that was. As soon as my guy's done here, we're going to make ourselves a game here. So, I want to start making a game under this new system. And now we have like a million new topics, but I'm not going to do, I'm only going to do topics that you guys are suggesting, of course. And one of those popular ones is uh, Battlefield Nero Line or Nero Field Hardline. And uh, we're going to go Nero Field Hardline, I guess. Which is, of course, going to be a parody of the new Battlefield game that's going to be coming out. Triple A game, Emperor Mature, Pick Topic. It is basically going to be military action. Not simulation. It's not like the real military at all. Uh, platform, we put it on Nearbox 2. Alright, so action games, better on the PS5, and Mature is also better on the PS5, I guess, and the PC, where Mature is very good, and action games are actually pretty good too, so we'll do that. We'll go with the Nero engine, next. Now, somewhere they said that you have to, like, add, okay, we're looking at our screen, there's no place to add your price, right? Okay. There's somewhere you need to go to, like, add your price add the price of your game maybe that's somewhere in the development area because otherwise you won't make any money off your game but as of right now I, i'm just showing you guys you guys can see it too i'm not seeing anywhere that you can like enter in the price of your game i want to sell my games for 60 dollars. i don't know if that's higher or lower than what they usually go for maybe we'll make some cheap games on occasion i don't know but i like the idea that like these mods are just adding things i wish this game would have had in the first place all right, so engine. Wow, these things are already really set up for us. Okay. <laughs> Did we? Yeah, that was weird. Why is it already set? Does it, does it go ahead and take? Does it remember like the last action game that we made and just automatically put the people where they need to be? Clear tent. Clear trend towards casual games. I also wonder if all those other consoles, like the Atari and the Macintosh, I wonder if those are all just things that were no longer, they're no longer existing within the game. That's probably a thing. Oh, and also the Xbox 360 Slim, it probably doesn't exist anymore either, because we're at the Xbox Next. So maybe all those things would have actually mattered if we were doing a brand new playthrough, which I don't think I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to continue this one. We got Word Neuropolis working on a new game. Would you be willing to share some information on it? Sure. What is your expectation regarding the success of Nero Field Hardline? Hype game! It's gonna be so cool. It's like Cops and Robbers, but Battlefieldy. It's gonna be awesome. Never get tired of the music in this game. You know, I've put like almost 20 hours into it. Oh, oh, I'm stupid. We should be. There we are. Here. Well, did you ever stop and think maybe I was doing in the middle of something? Hmm. Okay, this isn't exactly right. All right, so perfect. It's not exactly right. So AI, which I believe to be a tech thing. I'm not even sure. We're going to do like that. We're going to do it right there. And then we're going to put Irene here and Irene here. And we're going to buff Irene up to 100. There we are. There we go. So why are tech guys doing the AI? Which I think AI is a tech thing. I, I Of course, I don't know, but... <laughs> why isn't there a mod that lets us know what this stuff, what all this crap means? Wait, oh no, game price! 
This is where you, you have to go all the way over here to do the game price. Oh, wow. All right, full $60 game. Set price. I'm so happy I went over here. Set price. Wow. Why would you have to go over here to do it? I don't know. That's weird. Let's start our marketing campaign. That's weird. I'm glad I came over here. I was like, dude, let's do a marketing campaign. Let's make sure we do that. Then it's like, oh, so that's where we set the price of our game. Otherwise, we've been selling our game for $18. Wait, what? Fire in the office. Oh, my God. The fire just broke out. We need to leave now. After the fire has been extinguished, we look back inside and see there's a lot of damage. What? You were able to save your current project, but the repair was expensive, and this game better be worth its money. 15,000. Did you just add random fires in Neuropolis? We've been running Neuropolis for 100 years, and there's never been a fire. <laughs> fire in the office. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was, um. I had, I had to be part of the expansion pack, which isn't an official expansion pack, by the way. When I say expansion pack, that is just a mod. It's called it's a mod called the expansion pack. Which, of course, once again, link in the description. Also, down here, probably hard as hell to read, uh, especially if you don't play on full screen. But it says uh, Monday, or Monday, March 22nd, 2088. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, graphics, most important. Followed up by sound. So, graphics is a design thing. Mr. Clinton Harris, hop in there. Sound? I'm going to go out on the limb and say the sound is a tech-based thing. Not sure. So we're going to have Jonathan Joseph working on that. Now everyone's at 100. And our old ace in the hole, Manuel Franklin. He ain't doing nothing for the rest for this particular game. There's a fire in the office. Can you believe that crap? Fire in the office. <laughs> wow. That was pretty cool though. Like ran random stuff like like back in the day, that would hurt like crazy. Cause you know, we like we didn't even make fifteen thousand dollars like off our games. Like it took us a while to like get to there, you know? So like what if like in, like during like the first game or so, you know, we were to have that fire, that could have been an issue. That could have been a big issue. That's cool. I wonder what other, what other random things the game might throw at us. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Ah, yeah, that's we get E3, get some more of that hypey hype, 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 hype. And so far, our design tech-wise, the game's doing all right. Not too bad. We should probably do some training eventually, too. Why do I have a feeling this is going to be another freaking 100-episode Let's Play? <laughs> we should do some training, though. We really should. We did a bunch of researching at the beginning here. We should probably do some training. Make our guys uh, faster. Make them better at design. Make them better at technology. Therefore, maybe gain more design and more technology points, which might equal out to a higher score in our game. That could be the case. That'd be neat. I don't know. But uh, 5,227,376 people showed up. They're all interested in Nero Field Hardline. I'm interested in fixing all them damn bugs. <laughs> we set our price at 60, 60, 60 a piece. So if it sells a million, that means it's gonna make like 60 million. Wow, okay, this could be ridiculous. We could be making a lot of money off this. I have a feeling the game wasn't selling everything for $60 each. Or maybe it was, I don't know. I want them bugs out of here before I click finish. And I refuse to click the finish button while the bubbles are still popping. See, because there's that bug. All right, you fix the bug, perfect. Hey, that's a new record in tech. And they're pretty even. 1264 versus 1247. What did we level up? I missed it. Uh, level design. We leveled up our level design. Alright, let's see. Says some bitch make all kinds of money. Watch, watch them change around the reviews like $60. This game ain't worth $60. Alright, so 7 for be uh, Beautiful 7. And 8, I love it. And 8, our focus on engine serve the game well. Come on, give us a 9. Alright, another 8. Alright, 8, 8, 8, 7. That's not too shabby. That's a that's a pretty well all around game. Oh, I could have, I could have bought them black bulls, which are obviously red bulls. Uh, send you guys on vacation. Vacation, vacation, vacation. It's weird because there's more things in the options now. It's like I I can't like instantly snap to where vacation is like I could before. All right, one million in sales so far. Oh lordy. I wonder how many more it'll sell. 1 million in sales in the first week. It's a full $60 game. I wonder if we'll be making more money or the same money. 
I don't know if the game automatically sold stuff for sixty dollars. Or maybe if it was like twenty like it said. Alright, an exclusive interview a while ago, a player from Neuropolis made very bold remarks about their then in development game. Near a field hardline, predicting that it would be uber successful. Now that the game is out, the market consensus is that player was spot on as the game has received very positive reviews. Overall it's had a positive effect on sales. Which is probably why it sold five million copies in the first three weeks. Oh wow, this game could be very popular. <laughs> We got word Nearfield Hardlines racked up 5 million in sales in 4 weeks. That's quite a bit. That is quite a bit indeed. We could be making a ridiculous amount of money. I, I'm not getting... I, usually, like, we end that episode off. Like, alright, let's end the episode off here. Um, and then we see, like, how the game kind of finished off in the next one. But we're going to wait. I want to see how much money this thing makes. Because it feels like we've jumped up a lot of money so far. Nearfield Hardlines racked up 10 million in sales in one, two, three, four, five. In nine, it took us nine weeks to rack up 10 million in sales. It's an unbelievably odd number. Damn giggity. So while we're at that, let's start training. So, Clint Harris, you're really a good backup guy in really every regard. But usually we do. You know what? We'll just work on Clinton's speed because he, he's, he's good all around. Wyatt. You are our tech person, if I remember right. Yes, you are our tech person. Therefore, we are going to work, give you the old co jam that gets you even better at technology than you were before. Mr. Paul Reed, we're going to train you up and we're going to try and make you even better at design than you were before. Uh, Manuel, you're, you're just kind of you're an all around guy. 301 design, 308 technology. So, we're going to make him do the time trials to make his speed faster. Irene. It's more of a design person, so we're going to work on uh, your pixel cup design. John Joseph is our tech person, or one of our tech people. No, no click that eh, train. Yes, he's more of a tech person, so we're going to give you the old code jam. I want to make our games better. I want to I want a perfect game. That'd be so cool. We've got a 10, 10, 10, 9. Which, which gives us an overall rating of 9.75. That stinks. All right. And post now. No new insights. Okay, that's cool. I'm glad I did that game report then. Thank you. Let's train me up, which I'm more of an in-between. Wow, my guy's really not specializing in really anything, which I guess is okay. Cause my guy kind of goes goes where he's needed, but really more towards design, I guess. But we're going to do uh, work on his time trials. Do that. And while they're all getting trained, we can uh, watch the Battlefield Nero line. Or near field hardline <laughs> uh, sales, which are currently at 13.5 million. Oh, that's cool. We're at $3 billion now. If we made a billion dollars off this game, I'm going to call hacks because that's kind of absurd. Wait a minute. If I can set the price for the game, can I set the price for the console? Uh, I can develop my own PC. I can develop my own PC. <gasps> that's gonna probably need to happen. <laughs> that's gonna be cool. But dude, look how much we made three billion! We just did two billion last episode? How do we make a billion dollars in one episode? I want I want this game to end so I can see how much money it's made. Because it doesn't make any sense making a sixty dollar game. Because if so, it's like, oh well then, uh this is this kinda breaks the game in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neurofield Hardline is now off the market. It sold 14.7 million units, generating 885,905,854 in sales. To put that into comparison, usually we would make like 200 million. We made probably four times as much money off of that game uh, than we did any other game that sold as much as it did. So... I don't know. I feel as though that's cheap, even though it really isn't. Or I'm just selling my I'm just selling my games for sixty dollars like they should be. I don't know if that's cheap or not. Well, either way, let me know your opinion on that in the comments. I'm end the episode off here. I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the Game Dev Tycoon playthrough. And if you did, please be sure the ring where you guys feel the video deserves. And of course, leave your suggestions for different game ideas in the comments. I take the good ones. I copy and paste them into this little document folder over here. And on my second monitor, and I read them, and I make the make games based upon your guys' feedback and stuff. And also, what you guys want, we can uh, we got we got we can make our own computer. We can make our own uh, new console, which we should probably research a bunch of different things that they, we can add now and make a new engine, then make the new console and make the new computer, and then all of that cool stuff until eventually Neuropolis is just a complete monopoly completely.
but we could call us Neuropoly. That would be pretty cool. That's clever. Either way, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the Game Dev Tycoon playthrough. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.